All right, welcome to our video this evening on Tuesday, June the 9th of uh, 2020. So I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. This is uh, the most important video of the entire tournament, folks. Uh, we only have three remaining, including this one. We have today's video, which is uh, Final Four. We have tomorrow's video, which is Final Four. And we will, let's see, we're going to have to skip Thursday. And the reason for that is we have to know the winner of tomorrow's before we can do the championship. And as you know, we give 48 hours for voting. So folks, um, we are, we're, at least right now, that's the plan, um, is we're gonna skip Thursday because we have to. We will have the championship video on Friday and we will know the winner on Sunday. So I'm sure I'll probably post up a small video late Sunday just as a simple announcement of the winner, okay? So we are so close to the end. This is so important. Thank you for watching, okay? So where are we now in the tournament? Well, folks, we are down to four people. It is amazing. We started with 32, and we have enjoyed seeing the stories of these people and I think, I know I, for myself, I have, I have really been inspired so much from these men. But we're now down to four. Here's where we are. Today we will be looking at the Apostle John. The Apostle John, okay? What an amazing person. And we will look at Barnabas today, okay? So... I, folks, this almost feels to me like the championship. It's, it's that good today, okay? Now, if you look over here, this is our final four. Now, you're going to notice we have John and Barnabas, we have Luke, the beloved physician, and we have a blank, okay? Now, the reason for that is yesterday's video... There's still time to vote, but folks, I'm about to write a name on the board here uh, because I think I know the winner, okay? Now, please understand, I'm about to write a person's name. It doesn't mean they've won yet, but they have a pretty big lead right now, and I think everyone has voted. I think so. So it looks like the last person of the final four will be I'm gonna write it up here. It looks like the last person will be Joseph of Arimathea. So please understand. That could change by tomorrow. It could be Lazarus, but I think it will be Joseph of Arimathea. So that looks like our final four, okay? We have a lot to cover today, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. Folks, please listen carefully. Please prayerfully consider who inspires you the most. This will be the hardest vote so far. Here we go. The Apostle John, what is his personality? We've talked about this already in round two and round three. His personality is dedicated. Okay? He is dedicated. Now, folks, I'm going to do something a little bit different here in this video. I want you to know I'm not... Really, today, this is the final four and in the championship, folks. I'm not going to change things up much, okay? Uh, I know every round so far, I have tried to give new information. Uh, there is a spot on here, new info. But 
really today we've practically talked about everything. There's not much else to cover. So I'm just going to remind you of who they are and just let you let you vote, okay? Plain and simple. But let me tell you, I'm going to give you a second personality on that person. Now, I've Throughout this tournament, there's been a couple of people that I wrote two words. Do you remember yesterday, for example, Lazarus? I put two words up there. But folks, those were two words that meant the exact same thing. It's just pick this word or pick that word. Well, I'm going to give you for these two guys, I'm not going to give you another word that means the same thing. Let me tell you what their second personality type was like. Okay, here it is. John was dedicated and also do you see that word? Thunder. You say, what does that mean? Well, let me remind you, he's one of the sons of thunder. Jesus would not have given them that nickname had it not have been both of their personalities. Now, folks, I do think it was a little bit more of his brother James that had that stronger, thunderous, passionate personality, but John had it too. But I think that would probably be his second personality, okay? Very quickly here, who has he... Uh, had victories over so far. He had a victory over um, Apollos, a victory over Bartholomew the Apostle, and his own brother, James. the son of Zebedee, okay? By the way, his brother James in that video got zero votes, okay? Now, here's something new for this Final Four video. Who is a good comparison for John? I found this interesting when I was preparing this today. What other person have we seen in this tournament that reminds us of John? I, this is very interesting. I got to thinking about it, <clears throat> and I came up with a name, and I'll tell you why. I think he closely compares to a man in the Bible named Timothy. I'll tell you why. Okay? Timothy as you know, was a very young man when he comes on the scene in the New Testament. Well, the Apostle John, in the four Gospels, he is the youngest of the 12 apostles. He may have been 20, 21 years old. Timothy was very young when Paul found him. You see, they both, we see John and Timothy both kind of... Uh, evolve, if that's a word I can use here, they evolved into just wonderful leaders. We get to watch their growth as they work their way to the top. So I compare him to Timothy. Now folks, please excuse me, I'm about to go fast because one, two, and three, it's exactly what you saw in round three of the tournament, okay? Here we go. I'm going to write them all at the same time here we go. What is John's biggest success? Success number one is that he was a gospel writer. Okay? He wrote the book of John, the gospel written by John. Number two, he wrote the book of Revelation. That's a big deal. Very, very good thing. 
And number three, we know for a fact that he started six churches. That's, that's pretty amazing. So there you go. You know those three already. So please forgive me if I don't really explain them, okay? Feel free to go back and watch these men's videos. They've had three victories. You can go back and see all their information. Now, number four. This is new right here, okay? Not necessarily new information, okay? I have mentioned this already. But uh, this, is, uh, this is new. Success number four. John was the only apostle at Mount Calvary. Okay. <clears throat> Please remember. <clears throat> Please remember that when I put success one, two, three, four, in my opinion, this is the four biggest things on their resume. Okay? I think in that order, one, two, three, four, that's the that's the biggest things they've done. Okay? Now, what's a new info? This is something I haven't mentioned at all in this tournament. Okay? It's not that big a deal, but it actually is. Okay? What's something new about him? Well, folks, we all know that John was, okay, he was one of the 12 apostles, right? In the 12 apostles, you had three men that we call the inner circle, Peter, James, and John. They were three that were the closest to Christ. But now here we go. Here's something new. After the resurrection of Jesus, the book of Acts, all the apostles are still there. They're still together. There's 11 of them now. They replaced Judas. There's now 12. And we see, folks, again, yes, there's 12, but again we see only a couple of them really go to the front of the line and say, okay, let's get busy. Now, folks, I'm not saying anything about John's brother James. He was an incredible man. But, folks, in the Gospels, Peter, James, and John is the inner circle. Folks, when you go to the book of Acts, there's only two who really become the, the front leaders. You could almost call it the new inner circle. Two of them. It's Peter and John. That's it. Now, they were all doing a great job. But anyway, so I'm going to say uh, how can I word this? Uh, Okay, please understand what this means. What I mean is early, at the beginning of the book of Acts, he is still one of the main leaders. He didn't go to the back of the line, folks. He took a front position and went with it, okay? So that's big for him. Now, last of all, martyrdom. Do you ever want to remember what that means? Killed for your faith. You were a martyr. Folks, we talked about this only in round one. I didn't talk about this in round two and three. Let me just remind you, John, of the 12 apostles, he's the only one who didn't die as a martyr. All the other 11 were killed for their faith. They tried to kill John. They tried to burn him in, in boiling oil. 
But it was another Daniel in the lion's den moment, folks, because they put him in the oil. He did not burn. God miraculously saved him. John survived, and he went on. And at the end of the first century, he died of natural causes. So, folks, he, even though they tried... He actually did not die a martyr. He died of natural causes. All right, so there's John. I hope you enjoyed that. I tried my best. There we go. Now, Barnabas. Now, folks... If John was against anybody else in this video, okay, I would probably say John's going to win. No doubt, nobody can stand, you know, side by side with the Apostle John, but Barnabas can, okay? I have noticed throughout this tournament that Barnabas has kind of stole our hearts, if you know what I mean. Uh, he's got a wonderful story, and here it is. Barnabas's personality. Do you remember that um, his real name isn't Barnabas? It was a nickname. They called him that because it means the son of consolation, which means... Um, a comforter, okay? So that is his personality. He loved comforting other people. All right. Now, I'm going to give you his second personality. This may be... Um, you may not consider this a personality, but I, I kind of do. Uh, let's see. Please listen to this. It's found in the book of Acts 11, verse 24. It's talking about Barnabas. Listen what it says. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Did you hear? It said... It said, he was a good man. Now, that may not sound like much to some people, but folks, Barnabas was so loved. I think it was because of that comforting, warm nature about him that when you looked at him, you could only say, he's just a good man. Okay, so I'm going to call that his second personality. I know that may not classify as a personality, but it's what he was known as. Okay. Who has Barnabas had wins over <clears throat> in this tournament? Very quickly here. He had a victory over the apostle known as James, the son of Alphaeus. He had a victory over Philip, the evangelist. And his most recent victory was his best victory. He had a win over the apostle Peter. Wow, that's, uh, that's some impressive victories. <clears throat> now, I had fun with this one as well. Who does he compare to? Who have we seen that is similar to Barnabas? Well, folks, there's only one man I could find. Um, you may not remember this person because he didn't make it out of the first round. But if you go back in our videos to the round, the first round, look at the Apostle Thaddeus. 
not a lot of people knows about Thaddeus. But I'm going to write him up here. Okay. Um, why Thaddeus? Well, folks, please remember very quickly here, Thaddeus is a nickname as well. He, that wasn't his real name. Just like Barnabas was a nickname. The name Thaddeus means dear to the heart, meaning just a, a wonderful person. Okay? So I think they closely resemble each other. <clears throat> now here we go. One, two, and three. I'm going to write them all together. No explanation needed. We've seen it already. Number one, his biggest success, he was a co-partner with the Apostle Paul. Okay? Co-partner with Paul. All right? I got to say it, folks. I, I don't need to explain it, but I must remind you. Paul had many helpers. Barnabas is not just a helper. When God called them to start those incredible missionary journeys, God didn't say, Paul, I'm picking you. Barnabas is your now your helper. He's going to carry your bags and, and make your coffee. That's not Barnabas' role. They were 50-50 partners. If you look at the verse, folks, in Acts 13, it even says Barnabas and, and Paul. God said his name first. How about that? Amen. Amen. He was a co-partner on the missionary journeys of Paul. Okay? His second biggest success, he went on his own journey Later, after him and Paul had, had went their different ways, he was the leader. He was co-leader the first time. The second time, he was the leader, and he went with Mark. I think everyone remembers that story, right? And the third thing, I love it, is he sold his land. For the gospel. Folks, do you know how today in our churches we tithe, but then there's also missions giving. You give this amount directly to missions, okay? Do you realize? That that's what Barnabas did. You'll find that in Acts chapter 4. He was one of the first people in the church to maybe the first, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, in, in the book of Acts chapter 4. I think he's the first person. He sold his land and he he brought the money to the apostles. He said, here it is. This is to help us get the gospel out. Folks, that's what you call mission giving. I think if you wonder where did mission giving begin, I think we know the man probably to thank for that. Now, success number four. I don't have time to explain. I'm sorry, this video is going longer. Folks, it's the final four. I'm sorry. There's a lot to say. I don't have time to explain, but if you read Acts 11, you can do it later tonight or something. Barnabas went to the city of Antioch. And all I can tell you folks is, wonderful things began happening. So much that Barnabas left for a while to go get the Apostle Paul. And he brought Paul back with him to Antioch. 
This is before they ever went on their missionary journeys. And Barnabas and Paul stayed in Antioch. You see, folks, I almost think when I think about it, Barnabas seems to me to have been the leader of him and Paul's little team they had. <clears throat> but they stayed in Antioch, and if you read Acts 11, the Bible says they began to be called Christians first in Antioch. Well, who was, who was doing the work there? I believe Barnabas is to be thanked for such a wonderful work happening there that the name Christian was developed, okay? So I'm going to say his fourth biggest success was the revival in Antioch. All I can tell you folks is read Acts 11. You'll know what I mean, okay? Wonderful things happen. Barnabas was right in the heart of it. Now, what's a piece of new info that, uh, that I can give you on him? Okay. I would like to share something with you. Let's see here. Okay, we're almost done, folks. As you know, in the Gospels, there were 12 men named apostles, right? There were many people called disciples. Folks, you and I today, we're a disciple. The, the word disciple means one who spreads the doctrines of another. You know what that means? That means we represent Christ and we talk about Christ. We're a disciple of his. But listen at the definition of an apostle. An apostle is one sent on a mission. Okay? That was a specific title only given to certain people. Okay? There were 12 original. There wound up, from what I can tell, there were four more people in the Bible, only four given the name Apostle. After the original 12, here they are. Matthias, he was the replacement of Judas Iscariot. The Apostle Paul, we know him, right? But did you know, James, the brother of Christ, was given the name Apostle, and none other than this man right here, Barnabas. You can read that in Acts 1414, 14, he is only one of 16 people in the New Testament called an apostle. He was given that name. All right. He was given the title apostle. And last of all, martyrdom. Folks, we have to turn to the history books. I can tell you this, it's a little bit hard sometimes to know what the exact truth is, but it is said for sure, yes, he met his death by being killed. From what I read, he was preaching in, in, in the synagogue, preaching and persuading people for Christ. Some people got upset they drug him out of the temple, they tortured him, and they stoned him to death. And to make it worse, Mark, his partner, his nephew, by the way, saw it happen. But folks, that is what looks like how he met his end. Ultimately, he was stoned to death. So folks... I've done my best today. I think this video, I'm sorry, this is probably the longest video of the tournament. I think we're at about 30 minutes right now. But folks, I want to thank you so much because without you watching and voting, none of this could have ever happened in this tournament. I think hardest vote yet 
Both of these are, with, are, are deserving to be in the championship video on Friday. Please prayerfully consider which man inspires you maybe just a little bit more. Is it the, the dedicated, kind of thunderous Apostle John with all the wonderful things? Or is it the comforter, the good man, the missionary Barnabas? Please cast your vote. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for our next Final Four video. Have a great night.